People have asked how I film myself when skiing. My ultimate goal is to make it look like someone else is filming me. If people are asking, that may mean that I'm somewhat accomplishing that goal. Well, I use one camera. Let's talk about it briefly, then go into one of the easiest ways to use it, and then talk about two ways I've come up with to try and disguise the fact that I'm using it. Some of you may already be able to tell it's a 360 camera, specifically the Insta360 ONE X2. This isn't a sponsored video. I don't get anything from them. GoPro has a similar 360 camera out there, which is probably just as good. I just haven't used it. But I'll go over this camera briefly for those of you who aren't familiar with the 360 camera. Basically, there are two lenses, one here and one here. This lens looks at everything on this side. It's not looking in one direction. It's sort of like a fisheye lens. It records everything. This lens does the same thing in that direction. When you splice them together, which is what the app does, you get an entire 360 degree view. I can just film and I don't need to point anything at myself. I go into the app afterwards and select what angle I want the frame to be. I can put myself in the frame. I can put the direction I'm going in the frame. It's a really versatile concept. But the camera is only half of the equation because if you're filming yourself and you want it to look like somebody else is filming you, you want the camera to be far away from you. So how do you accomplish that? Well, the Insta360 and the GoPro both have a quarter inch screw mount at the base. That's in a blind spot on both cameras. So when you're looking at the footage afterwards, you don't really see whatever was there as long as it's within that blind spot. Add into the mix this, which is called an invisible selfie stick. Insta360 makes one, I'm sure GoPro does. You can use them interchangeably. You take it, screw it into the camera, and when you've got the selfie stick extended, you now have a camera that is four feet away from you and you cannot see the selfie stick. Now that you've got the camera set up, let's talk about one of the easiest ways to make it look like somebody else is filming you from a few feet away. Just simply grab the end of the selfie stick in one hand, grab your poles in the other hand, and start skiing. It's that simple. People often do this with the traditional GoPro camera, but you always tend to see the selfie stick in the shot. If you try and crop that selfie stick out, you're only getting half of the person skiing or boarding. If you use the Insta360 or the GoPro 360 camera, you don't see the selfie stick. It looks like your hand is empty. But that's the other problem. You generally aren't skiing with both poles in one hand and the other hand empty, which is what it will look like. Okay then, well, what's the next step in the progression? It's to hold your poles as you normally do and add the selfie stick to one hand. The challenge here is that you're now holding a selfie stick and a pole in one hand, but it's just a matter of finding a grip that is comfortable for you. When fine tuning your grip, if you want to make it look like you're just skiing normally, make sure you have a grip that actually looks like you're holding the pole normally. Because if you can torch your hand to get very comfortable with the selfie stick, nobody will see the selfie stick, but it will look like you're holding your pole in a weird way. Let's take a quick look at what it's like to ski holding the selfie stick in the same hand that you're holding your pole. What I have right now is a selfie stick in my left hand. I'm also holding my ski pole with my left hand. And on my right, I have a setup that I'll get into a little bit later. The selfie stick is actually attached to my pole. I'm using my old Insta360 ONE X camera. The reason I'm using it is so that you can actually see the selfie stick as I'm holding it in my left hand. Because if I use the camera that's in my left hand, you won't see the selfie stick. It's, it's an invisible selfie stick. All right, so this is the first for me using two selfie sticks at once. But here we go. First, a quick interruption for what is the most important point in this video. In my opinion, you should not be trying to film yourself skiing if you can't do it safely. You need to be very aware of where everybody is around you. Make sure you don't pose a risk to them and make sure you're not going to injure yourself. As fun as it is to get cool footage of yourself, you still have to ski responsibly and board responsibly. Don't become a hindrance to anybody else or yourself. All right, so turning will be a little bit difficult because now I've got two cameras that I'm worried about. But here's the view from the selfie stick that's on my left. One of the cool things you can do is rotate the camera. Starting out in front of me, you can rotate it to the left. It kind of changes the camera angle, which can be a cool technique. Let's come back to the front. So while you're skiing, pretty cool. 
After you get more and more comfortable with the grip, the next thing you'll want to try and focus on is keeping the camera relatively steady. Because if the camera's moving around as you move your arm, the footage is going to be all over the place. What that may mean is that you might not be pole planting that much with the arm that you're holding the camera in. So that does detract from the sort of natural look like somebody else is filming you. That's just a downside, unfortunately. So what it would be like if I try and pole plant? So you have the camera goes up. Here's the view from the actual camera. It's all over the place. So let's take a look at it from the camera on my right, how I'm holding the selfie stick. You can see I don't have it that stable in my hand. So I'm not moving my left hand to make sure I don't lose control of the selfie stick and drop it. But this gives you an idea of how you can use the camera, bringing it close up to your face, come away, give you a different angle. The thing is that your ski form is going to be different now. You're going to have to concentrate to try and make it look like you're skiing normally. All right. Let's go hit a very shallow, short bump run. Bumps are pretty well defined, but because it's not that steep a slope, I'm going to just hold on to the selfie stick as opposed to attaching it to the pole, which is what I normally do. I'm probably not going to pole plant with my left hand, which is where I'm going to hold the selfie stick. And let's see how it looks. One of the solutions I came up with for the problem of having to hold two things in one hand, the pole and the selfie stick, is to attach the selfie stick to the pole. I drilled a hole straight through the pole. Take a quarter inch screw, stick it through the hole, and then mount the camera to the screw. Once you've done that, you now have a four foot selfie stick attached to your pole. A lot easier to hold the pole, a lot more natural look, and it's a little easier to maneuver. But what you're now gonna have to deal with is a pole that is lopsided, that wants to swing in towards you. You're gonna have to spend time balancing this pole now, and it's gonna come from your forearm. The more difficult terrain you're on, the harder it's going to be. But it's at least a step forward, I think, in getting a more natural shot. And you can get creative with the directions that you drill the hole. This one is straight across, so the camera is out laterally from you. Here, I chose a diagonal angle up. You stick a longer screw through, since this is on a diagonal. Now, you can extend the selfie stick, and you've got an angle that's up above you a little bit. Let's see what it's like to ski with the selfie stick attached to one of the ski poles. Okay, this is the selfie stick in the horizontal position. Straight across, attached to the pole. This is the easiest one to ski as close to normal as possible. But again, you can rotate the angle. I'm starting the side, I can get a view from behind. All I'm doing is rotating my wrist. Come down, get a little air. You're gonna get a little air here. Woo! And you get a cool shot. What happens if I try to pole plant with the camera in my pole that's at a diagonal. See how it goes up and down? All over the place, a little crazy. And as usual, it's always a challenge to try and ski normally because you got a four foot pole coming off of you and the balance on that pole is really off. It takes some getting used to, but that's the fun challenge to try and ski as aggressively as you normally do and make it look like somebody else is filming you. So far, both ways of filming, either holding the selfie stick in your hand or attaching it to the ski pole, involve you not really being able to have free movement with your hands. So I have this solution, which is not one that I use very often because it does increase the risk of injury. I only use this when I'm skiing on slopes where I have a high degree of confidence that I'm not going to fall, and I don't do it for that long. But the answer is to attach it to your helmet. You see people who have those GoPro mounts for their traditional GoPros? I don't like that because I want my helmet to look like there's nothing attached to it. That led me to my current helmet solution, which is to drill a hole straight into the helmet and have the selfie stick protrude from the helmet. That way, any mark that you might see in the blind spot is right up against the helmet. If it's black, it blends in. If it's gray, it may look like a scuff. If there is no mark in that particular shot, great, you don't see it. And the result, when the selfie stick is fully extended, is this ridiculous mess. 
It's totally lopsided. You can see it pulling my head to one side, which is why you don't want to do this that often. You might be able to get off a few turns and the shot will look great for those turns, but it's really impractical to be able to ski this way. At least though, your hands are totally free and it may look like somebody is following you with the drone or somebody somehow has a selfie stick that is really high up filming you. I would not recommend that anybody try it. I'm just trying to use it in a safe area to get some really good shots and then move on. All right, to give everybody a sense of what it's like to ski with the selfie stick attached to the helmet, I've got that set up right now, and I've also got another selfie stick attached to my pole. That way you can actually see the selfie stick attached to the helmet as I'm skiing. I'm not gonna ski that long with this because it's kind of pain and it's slushy right now. I'll just put in footage afterwards of what it looks like from other times that I've done it. All right, so here we go. Craziness. Skiing with two of these at once. It's actually not that much weight right now against my head. So, okay, normally I have a full tension, not full tension. Just my right But the helmet cam, when we get this, we get the cam. different parts of my helmet. From behind is one of the coolest shots. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing some of the techniques that I use to film myself. If you have any ideas or things that you do, definitely leave them in the comments below. I am now going to ski one final run of the season in this slush, not filming anything. That's one of the funnest things. After you've been spending a lot of time filming yourself where you feel like you're kind of partially paralyzed, then to just be out there and free, it's liberating and nice. Don't let go Chasing a beat